The Holy Mass serves as the sacred convergence of heaven and earth. In it, God communicates with us through His Word, and we partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, as our sustenance. Though we may not perceive them, the entire Church, along with the saints and angels, is present. The salvation of humanity was accomplished through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, a mystery enacted in every holy Massachusetts. To fully engage in the Eucharistic celebration and derive its maximum benefits, we wish to highlight some often overlooked aspects and advice. Firstly, punctuality is essential. Just as we arrive early for important meetings or when catching a flight, arriving a few minutes early for Mass demonstrates the significance of God in our lives. Remember, God eagerly awaits our presence and has reserved a place for us at His table. Let us not keep Him waiting. Secondly, dress modestly. Just as we dress appropriately for different occasions, we should dress respectfully for Massachusetts. Avoid clothing that may distract or provoke, such as revealing attire. Our focus should be on encountering God, not on making a fashion statement. Thirdly, greet the Lord upon entering the church by making the sign of the cross. It is a respectful way to acknowledge His presence and invoke His blessings upon us. Let's perform the sign of the cross with correctness and calmness, just as we greet others with kindness and respect in society. Finally, if passing in front of the altar or tabernacle, consider making a curtsy or genuflecting as a sign of reverence towards Christ's presence. Reverence is essential in acknowledging the sacredness of the space and the presence of the divine. Fifthly, let's not limit ourselves to a perfunctory genuflection. Instead, let's approach this gesture with genuine devotion, allowing it to reflect our mindfulness of God's presence. Such reverence will deepen our connection with the divine. Moving on to the sixth tip, refraining from eating, drinking, or chewing gum during Mass or inside the church premises is crucial. Just as we wouldn't consume food or beverages during an important meeting, we must recognize the sacredness of the occasion. Water may be consumed if necessary for health reasons, but otherwise, it's best to refrain from eating or drinking. Seventhly, let's avoid crossing our legs during Massachusetts. This posture is deemed disrespectful, particularly in formal settings where esteemed individuals gather. Our reverence should extend to our physical demeanor, reflecting the solemnity of the occasion. Before the proclamation of the gospel, it is customary to make a small sign of the cross on the forehead, lips, and chest. This gesture symbolizes our readiness to receive God's word with an open mind, to proclaim it with our lips, and to embrace it in our hearts. While the full sign of the cross on the body is omitted, the significance of this gesture remains profound. Eighthly, during the consecration of the Eucharist, it is inappropriate to sit unless due to illness or old age. Ideally, we should kneel to express our reverence for Christ's presence on the altar. However, if kneeling is not feasible, standing is a suitable alternative. Our posture during this sacred moment should reflect our deep respect for the divine. Next, it's important not to recite aloud the phrase, for Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, during the Eucharistic prayer. This phrase is reserved for the priest who presides over the Mass, emphasizing the priest's role as the leader of the congregation in this solemn prayer. Moving on to the tenth tip, let's refrain from moving from our place to offer the sign of peace. Instead, let's extend this gesture only to those nearby, avoiding unnecessary disruptions during Massachusetts. Such gestures of goodwill should be confined to those within our immediate vicinity, maintaining the solemnity of the occasion. Eleventh, it's crucial to approach communion with readiness and preparation. Observing the Eucharistic fast and ensuring a state of grace through confession are essential prerequisites for receiving the Eucharist. While Jesus is indeed merciful, St. Paul's admonition reminds us of the importance of approaching the sacrament with reverence and purity of heart. Twelfth, after receiving communion, it's essential to refrain from engaging in conversation with others. Instead, let's return to our place and commune silently with the Lord whom we have just received. For those who haven't partaken of the Eucharist, 
they can make a spiritual communion by directly communicating with the Lord. During these moments, let's seize the opportunity to adore Him, seeking assistance from the angels and saints to honor Him. Additionally, let's express gratitude for the blessings received and convey our love for Him, freely presenting our needs. The Lord understands our dual requirements for both material and spiritual blessings, and in these precious moments, He draws closer to us than ever. Let's guard against distractions and fully immerse ourselves in His presence. 13. Our cell phones should not distract us during Massachusetts. Before entering the church, let's ensure our phones are on silent mode. It's impolite and disrespectful to answer messages or engage in phone conversations during Massachusetts. Instead, let's devote our undivided attention to the Lord, who awaits us with boundless mercy in this sacred encounter of love. Lastly, after the Mass concludes, let's respectfully pay our regards without hastily leaving the Church. Let's not overlook the blessing bestowed upon us as we are sent forth into the world to bear witness to the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Departing with a renewed sense of purpose inspired by the Lord, let's strive to contribute to the establishment of His Kingdom of Love in the world. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in Your infinite mercy, we come before You with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Creator of all things visible and invisible. We humbly bow before Your Majesty, acknowledging Your sovereignty over all creation. Lord, in Your boundless love, You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us from sin and to reconcile us to Yourself. Through His sacrifice on the cross, he offered us the gift of salvation, opening the gates of heaven for all who believe in Him. We praise You, O God, for Your unending grace and mercy that sustain us each day. As we journey through life, guide our steps and illuminate our path with Your divine light. Grant us the wisdom to discern Your will and the courage to follow it faithfully. Heavenly Father, in times of joy, we rejoice in Your blessings, and in times of trial, we find solace in Your presence. May Your Holy Spirit dwell within us, comforting us in times of sorrow and filling us with peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord Jesus, You are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to walk in Your footsteps, to speak Your truth, and to live according to Your commandments. May our lives be a reflection of Your love and a witness to Your glory. We offer this prayer to You, O Lord, with hearts uplifted and hands outstretched. Hear our supplications and grant us the grace to live each day in accordance with your holy will. Amen.